welcome to H. Northumberland Avenue, uh, and this is the 2014 Institute of Physics Awards Dinner. I'm absolutely delighted that you've all been able to join us. I think we've got about 300 of you here this evening to celebrate the remarkable achievements of our physics community. Of course, we will be focusing this evening on the activities and the successes of our award winners. But I also wanted to take this opportunity to acknowledge and to thank all of the volunteers who have contributed to the work of the Institute throughout the year, whether in our regional branches, in our scientific and technical groups, on our many advisory bodies and committees, or by organising conferences that bring our community together. Without your enthusiasm and energy, the Institute would not be able to pursue such a wide-ranging agenda. So thank you very much. Of course, the health of our discipline is affected by those who populate it. And that's why our primary concern at the Institute must be you, our members, and the next generation of physicists who follow on behind you. So where better to start in education than in schools? And a few words about what we are doing on that theme. I think it's fair to say that everyone now seems to have heard the message. Studying physics at school is a good thing to do and opens up career opportunities. Politicians are selling this message for us now, which is really great. Of course, diversity also looms large as the single greatest challenge to the long-term health of our discipline. Understanding and tackling all the complex factors that lead to so few girls choosing to take physics, just one in five of the student cohort at A-level, must be improved by our work. Now, I have no doubt of that. But sadly, the problem is not just confined to gender. There is also a massive gulf between different ethnic and socio-economic groups' perception of the opportunities that a strong school education in physics offers. We need to do more research to understand the nature and depth of this wider problem, and you can expect to hear more on this in the near future. In summary, we really will not stop pursuing this education agenda until the opportunity to choose to study physics, taught by excellent and motivated teachers, is available to every school student in the UK. And that's really our challenge. We know that physics underpins the most exciting new developments in many areas of science and engineering and has consistently served to transform all of our lives in many different and unexpected ways. The Institute also has a valuable part to play in making sure that the great ideas emerging from physics research are seen by business and that opportunities for exploitation are opened up. Supporting information exchange between business and research base, providing trusted and useful advice to inform government policy, supporting and promoting physics entrepreneurs, and of course, working to ensure that there are enough qualified physicists both entering and being retained in the labour pool. These are all things that we should be addressing within the Institute and our programme. Turning now to the theme of society, the IOP has in the past been responsible for pioneering methods to engage the public with science. We were one of the first to take science demonstrations out to events like music festivals and start to demonstrate the popular appeal of physics. However, the rest of the world is now caught up, and so it's all more difficult to come up with something new and exciting, but we've got to plan to notch it up a few gears. From an imminent event at the Royal Opera House, where we will be exploring the relationship between physics and music with some illustrious friends, to works of art that capture the beauty of physics, to share it with thousands of uninitiated spectators. The Institute is committing itself to reaching one million new people every year. Looking now at discovery, we are looking after our core discipline, where curiosity and exploration need to come together. We've been asking ourselves the question, where is it that the Institute can add the most value for physics, physics researchers, whether they're based in university or in business? After discussions with the community, we now believe it is where the academic disciplines meet. Think of the current advances in areas such as biophysics and medical physics, and where also geographical barriers restrict, and those are the areas we can be most of use. We can bring the different disciplines together, we can bring researchers with the same interests from different parts of the world together to enable new connections to be made that can be a catalyst for new thinking and new ideas. Finally, the Institute is nothing without its members and its friends. That is why at the very heart of our strategy is the strand of work we are labelling community. We should never forget we are a scientific community and one that it works within an international context. Our communication and publishing activities are key in elements of engaging our community in sharing their professional know-how, research aspirations and results. But also vital are our organisational structures and our partnerships around the world. 
We also need you and your colleagues to be engaged with and inspired by what we do. Reaching out to our members, the branches, the groups, our teaching community, we need you to join with us to address this agenda. And we will be setting out the strategy in a way that we hope will encourage you to work with us in shaping it and how it is delivered in future years.